Hello, this is Chris, owner of Bayside Custom Gunworks. Um, since this past season, many customers have asked me to go ahead and post a video explaining and showing how I'm shooting these animals with a standard revolver beyond 100 yards, and in some cases beyond 150 yards, um, and dropping them in one shot. Um, I mean, there's been many pictures and write-ups posted about it, but it's time to do a video and go ahead and show everyone the mechanics of it. And we'll go over some of this gun setup and some of the shooting, uh, shooting skills that need to be applied to it in, in detail. We're not going to go over the basic stuff like trigger control and breathing and sight alignment, sight picture. All that stuff still applies. It's just all more refined. Um, the first big hot topic of contention in this whole thing is caliber. Caliber in bullet selection is the smallest part of the equation in taking an animal. It's all about shot placement. You can use the smallest caliber out there and place the bullet correctly where it's supposed to go and you will kill that animal. All right. So moving on ahead, the, the two calibers I normally run for, for hunting in general is 357 and 44. And the, uh, the reasons being is the massive selection of projectiles. Um, the 357 shoots really flat. The 44, the right projectile, shoots plenty flat. Um, and some of the bigger calibers don't do the same. Some of them don't shoot as flat. Plus, you have the big thing of follow through. Follow through is really important. When you're shooting farther, you're gonna have a lot of vertical string in them shots if you don't follow through. The bigger the caliber you go, the more difficult follow through becomes. And there's not much on this planet I don't think a 44 will take. Um, so first off, on our gun, how we like to set our firearms up, and it doesn't matter if it's a performance center model like this, it looks a little different, or if it's a tradi traditional revolver. Um, is optics. You're probably not going to do this with iron sights. You can. It, it can be done, and, and, and I've done it myself, and it can be done. It's just more difficult. You're going to need something that you can adjust, um, some kind of target turret, or uh, or you need to have a point blank zero, know your holes within a reticle, um, some way to compensate for distance. All right. Uh, normally, I run with a pistol scope on here. Today, I'm playing with an ultra dot. Um, this ultra dot has a target turret in the back that actually repeats uh, to go ahead and get it out there. So everyone knows what I found to be the biggest improvement to this thing is take this adjustment knob off, take the O-ring out of there and all of a sudden the clicks become positive and you can feel exactly when they engage. The O-ring fits too tight and it causes it to feel like you're skipping clicks and you probably are actually skipping clicks. All right. So you need some kind of optic, some way to compensate for drop. Um, this past year I used the two power pistol scope. Uh, by Leopold, I zeroed uh, three inches high at 50. That put me dead on at 100. Then at 150, allowed me to put the horizontal line on top of the animal's back, an uh, animal with like a 15 inch brisket uh, or back to brisket measurement, like an antelope or a mule deer or whatever. And then uh, at 200 yards, the bottom post flex became the point of impact or the holding point for the point of impact. Um, that's another way to do it with reticles, or there's the burrs, they have the holdover lines and so forth. The other big thing in setup, besides obviously having a good trigger and uniform cylinder throats, all that stuff's important. But the other big thing is this. We're gonna use the bottom of this gun a lot when we shoot farther. The bottom of that gun, a traditional grip, like a Coke bottle, Smith & Wesson grip will have flat bottoms. And it's not gonna track and pivot on that bag like you want it to. And we're gonna use a bag as much as we can. If this bag takes up no space, has a clip, it's made by Holland, you can clip around your pocket or your vinyl harness, whatever that gun sits on that bag it'll roll back or it's sliding back and it's smooth it's not going to dig in and bite and bunch up under recoil and cause this thing to string shots everywhere so the hogue big butt grip is good it's probably in my eyes the premier one for shoot for handgun hunting uh, no matter whatever gun you put it on it gives you a nice wide base it's radius in the back so it'll track well and it won't bunch on the bag but even these traditional hogue grips or any other grip you can find where it mounts from the bottom has a radius to it that radius on this rubber grip here will still allow it to track. Rubber will stick to the bag a little more, but th this will still work. This one's also running ultra dot. There's no drop compensation in it. Um, this is a four minute dot, so you could use the dot as four inches at 100 yards, and you could use top and bottom of the dot for some holds. But I say this is a traditional one. Um, like if I was back east hunting in tree stands and stuff, this would probably be the setup I would run. But uh, that's really your main things for setup is just a grip that'll track. So something with a radius, an optic that you can adjust is preferred. Um, or you need to have one where you know the reticle dimensions so you can do holdovers. And you just need your, all your standard tuning or a good trigger is really important. So you're not pulling off target. 
uniform cylinder throat, so each chamber shoots the same. Muzzle brakes and porting help a lot. Um, and you'll see later when we do some shooting, this gun recoils almost none. It recoils less than some 357s do. And this is a 44 Magnum. And this standard six and a half inch classic, a, a popular gun that a lot of handgun hunters use, it's gonna roll up like this when I shoot it. Um, still a great gun, still very achievable. We're gonna make hits out to 150 yards today without a problem. Um, you know, but a little more difficult. If you add some porting to this, it's gonna come more straight back, less rise, it's gonna be easier on follow through. Follow through is key so we can minimize our vertical string at distance. All right, you gotta remember that bullets in the bore from the time you pull the trigger, that bullets in the bore is this thing is recoiling back before it leaves. So that follow through has to be the same every time or we're gonna string. Just like the trigger pull has to be the same every time or we're gonna pull right and left and do this with the gun. All right, really, really simple stuff. Really simple stuff, but you just gotta, you gotta practice a lot. This isn't something you're gonna achieve in one weekend on the range. Um, you're gonna have to practice a lot to get to the level where you can confidently take game beyond that magical 50 yard handgun mark. And there's no reason it's not achievable. The bullet leaves this handgun just as stable and flying just as true as it does a rifle. And if you've read the write-ups in this past year, you can see the damage that 40, this 44 Magnum did on antelope and deer at the 150 yard mark. Without, it, I mean, it's, it was no question that that was a wonderful hit, clean pass through, good exits, great expansion, lots of damage, bang flop, done. Um, so don't, don't listen to the internet experts too much on what they tell you is achievable with a handgun. A lot more is achievable than what you think. All right, here we're gonna get ready to go into positional shooting and we'll start off talking about the prone. All right, the prone position, once again, we're gonna use a bag and this, this prone position can then be built into all kinds of other positions. Um, it can go with, like this year, I shot a, uh, a white-tailed doe off of a fence post at 130 yards by using the same uh, concept I'm gonna show in a minute by placing the bag on top of the fence post and shooting with it, resting the gun. So we're gonna step away from the video for a second. We'll reset up the camera and we will uh, demonstrate a prone position and then say that same position will apply in other positions that you might find yourself in the field. All right, so here we are, laying in the prone on the shooting mat, trying to stay out of the snow so we don't get soaking wet. We're gonna demonstrate our prone shooting position. All right, using our square bag, it doesn't matter what bag you use. I mean, this one's just good because it has multiple heights. The Holland one has a, you got your flat side of the big tracking service. It's about two inches high. And then you get about three inches high and maybe four inches high that way. You get some different heights out of it. It's pretty functional. It's filled with dry beads. So it's lightweight and functional in the field. All right. So I'm gonna take my grip like I normally would. The same grip I always use, my same two hand grip. I'll rest the butt on there. I'm gonna compact the bag a little. Now I'm not death gripping. I'm not a driving the gun grip. A driving the gun grip is like what you see USPSA or defensive shooters do, where you're gonna be pushing in really hard, pushing, pulling, and you're gonna fight that gun so you can shoot rapidly. I'm more relaxed. I'm going to let this gun roll. Um, it's easier to be consistent on follow through letting the gun roll than it is to be consistent on follow through in a uh, combat type shooting grip, you know, the, the driving the gun grip where you're up real high and you're fighting it in. Um, we're 90% of handgun hunting or 90% of hunting in general. It's one shot. All right. It's one well aimed shot. So I'm going to get my nice grip. I'm going to relax. I get behind the gun. Same standard prone fundamentals. You have anywhere else, spread your feet out if you can, if the terrain allows, get them low to the ground. Relax, get behind the gun. You might have to cock your head a little. Take your time. The gun's unloaded, you're gonna be dry firing here. We're gonna settle in on the target. And just press that trigger. The gun shouldn't disturb at all. All right, I like to pin it to the rear when I'm done. Um, it's a technique I learned from teaching others to shoot and from taking classes myself, the pinning it to the rear after the shot, meaning when it breaks, I'm just holding the trigger. I'm not quickly trying to reset it. I'm just going to hold it back. All right. Just hold it to the rear and it, it helps me with my, my follow through. I'm not worried about getting out there and resetting and, you know, smoothly or anything. I'm just holding it to the rear, letting the gun roll. Real simple. All right, we'll cut away for a second, then we'll do some live fire on steel at uh, 100 yards. We'll talk through that, and uh, 
let you see how it goes. All right, so here we are all loaded up. We're gonna take some shots on steel. All right, the brightness settings at 10. Get nice and bright because it's reflective snow. 100 yard steel target, once again, I'm gonna rest it nice and smooth on the bag. Come in with my two hand hold, just firm, but not like crushing it. Settle in behind the gun. Trigger still held to the rear. Just let it roll up. And there you have it. That's with a traditional handgun, or I mean, excuse me, with the the performance center model. Now we'll go ahead and show it with a more traditional handgun. We'll show the same thing. It's the same concept, the same thing. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna refluff the bag a little so it'll, the gun will settle in nice and steady. And there you have it. That's shooting in the prone. And this same position can be applied if I'm shooting off a fence post. If this was my post, you know, I would place my bag on top or whatever uh, off a rock, uh, kneeling with you know, a log in front of you. The same concepts all apply. And you need to practice those. If you got a chance or you got a range where you can get out there and set up, you need to take your bag or whatever you're using and shoot in as many odd positions as you can. It'll make you more successful in the field. All right, now we're going to get set up and we're going to start talking about shooting sticks. All right, shooting sticks are probably the more complicated thing to shoot off of to learn what to do. Um, I like just a set of Primos or any other, the tent pole style, these break down where you can fold them up, put them in your pack. Um, they work really well. You need to plant the butts when you get out there. It's a big thing. Make sure they're planted and whatever you got. Right now we got snow, so it's pretty easy to dig them in. All right. I'd say you need to be able to just plant them in there so they stay put. Uh, walk at your trekking poles work well too. If you loop the handles together, they probably actually work better. Um, but this is more common that more people are gonna see, so we're gonna use these in the video. I took an antelope off of, at a, over 130 yards off of these this year. I took a couple of white tail with this. Um, this worked really, really well. Um, I even shot my cow elk off of shooting sticks with a contender using the same concept you're gonna see here. Now, first off, how a lot of people rest their gun on shooting sticks is they rest the frame or the barrel. This causes a binding in your in your your grip and your follow through. What this causes now, is I shoot this gun and it rolls up. I've got pressure on the front, changing the way I'm recoiling because I'm going to be holding down to those sticks. It's naturally what you're going to want to do to make you roll up. Not only that, but on the barrel, it's going to change the harmonics of the barrel. This is a little better. I mean, it, it, it's still pivoting there. It's gonna be the pivot point and it's gonna change the way the gun shoots. The best way to do this, to make your grip like you normally do and rest it between the fork on the sticks and lean into it. Double kneeling is always more stable than standard kneeling. I say this, this works phenomenal. To really, I mean, it just takes a lot of practice and you gotta find out what your max range is in each, and all, in each of these positions. Um, this just takes a lot more practice. We're gonna cut away again, then we're gonna shoot. Try to wring some steel here. Might miss some, I don't know. I haven't shot one of these guns this way yet. So we'll see what happens. All right, here we go. Getting all set up to shoot. And get our grip here. Rest it on the sticks. It's not the most comfortable on the back of the hands, but it works. Take our time. Level our dot right down on the target. Same thing, follow through, just hold the trigger back, let it roll up. We've hit our target, it's exactly what we wanted to do. Um, and so th these are really functional because they break up, break down small where you can put these in your pack real easy. You can have them with you all the time. 
it's no good to be practicing just off of big heavy tripods that you're not going to carry out there especially in the back country like we have here you're not going to pack around some 10 pound contraption to go shoot out there it's just not going to happen it's not practical those work just fine um hopefully this helps some guys hopefully this helped you guys and gals out there get ready to hunt this year and explain some of the shooting we did and some of the stuff we wrote about in a little video probably made that a little easier to understand doesn't take a whole lot of customization um this gun is a straight strictly factory gun with a red dot mounted on it with a trigger job that's it and when we change the grips i like these smooth ones better personally um that's a factory gun nothing crazy this one it's a factory performance center uniform cylinder throats trigger job um you know obviously mounted an ultra dot on there I mean, i've ran a pistol scope last year on it hogue big butt grips these are the to me these are the king of handgunning right here these big butt grips help out a lot um it's a sweet shooting gun and the muzzle brakes and porting as i said will help a lot it helps with follow through anything you can do to reduce that recoil will increase your accuracy so you just got to get out there and get the practicing you need to burn hundreds of rounds to be ready to go for a season and if you're not shooting that much in my eyes you're not ready to do it this isn't something you're going to go to the range two or three times a year and be ready to go do this and the ones who think that's all it takes well good luck tracking and that's what it's going to be is a lot of tracking and a lot of missed opportunities um it's going to take time on the range and i don't care if you're using this or a contender or an xp100 you have got to practice and you've got to practice in field positions and not on the bench and heck shooting's a lot of fun so it's a very perishable skill so guys happy hunting get out there and get practicing we'll send you more videos through the year on what we're doing to get ready